welcome, welcome. My name is Jason Moss. I am the host of That Damn Cooking Show. Welcome to another episode. Ba -ba -da -ba. <sighs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. <laughs> For those of you who are regulars to the network, you know this young lady right here. Hi. Say hello. Hi, everybody. I'm Good. Ashley Owens, and I run Connect to Success on RVN TV. But Excellent. I get a chance to be on your show today. Right, right, right. So we're not going to do the normal thing, you know, let's talk about your show and da 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 da. Oh. Uh, Ashley is a very good friend of mine. Uh, yeah. Actually, her and her husband, Alex. Yeah. Uh, two very, very busy people. Uh, busy yeah. life. You know, she's an entrepreneur who runs her own business. Alex has a very successful career. He does his thing. Mm -hmm. um, and the premise of this show is eating well. Yeah. And, you know, eating well is a lifestyle. And with any lifestyle, things happen. You know, we, 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 uh, the curveball, as I always say, gets thrown into it. So what I would like to do today is I would like to talk to Ashley about how she deals with life, how her and Alex deals with eating well, trying to live that healthiest lifestyle they can in a real world uh, setting. Drugs and booze. Pretty much. Well, you know, besides that, <laughs> uh, on our sober days, because every other Tuesday is a sober day for I'm her. drunk right now. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so, no, but in all seriousness, you know, and, and knowing you and your husband, you know, I, I know yeah. that your schedules are like this most of the time. Yeah. So how, how does that happen? How does that work? Uh, how do you stay focused? Uh, uh, you know, with, with your healthy eating and your, right. and your fitness. I, I know you try to get to the gym and, and yeah. the CrossFit and all that. Yeah. Um, you know, how does that work? And just, you know, what does it look like it. for someone like you in, in that lifestyle? And as always, while I talk to you or with you, I will be cooking. And today we're going to be doing a seasoned salmon. Seasoned. With a fresh fruit salad because, you know, we are here in Jersey and Jersey Fresh. So we have some uh, peaches and uh, fresh apricots and raspberries and apples and tomatoes and onion. We're going to squeeze a little bit of lime in there. I'm going to see where it goes, see if it wants me to add a little agave, maybe a little uh, balsamic vinaigrette, and we'll go from there. So that's what I'm going to be doing while so we're talking. Serious note, I've never seen an apricot. Really? Yep. Yeah. This is, this is a fresh... I'm also 100% idiot when it comes to cooking, that's okay. so I'm really that's excited okay. to be on the show today to kind of watch you, because when you're in my house, I'm just yelling at you. Oh, things. yes. I, I actually also... Oh, look at that. Uh -huh. There's a pit. Yeah, there's a pit. Taste I that. I just eat that yeah, with the skin on it? Yeah, just with the skin on it. I always eat with the skin on Oh, it's better. Just a little bit. Maybe that's why we're going to add a little of... Um, a little... Uh, excuse me. Don't die. A little of the agave. When they get uh, a little bit more ripe, that's Ooh. when the sugars come out. Interesting. But this will be nice because it'll play with the very, Peaches. very sweet peach. Yeah. And the McIntyre and the, uh, and the raspberry. All those flavors will play together with the tomato. And like I said, if we need to spice it up a little bit with the, uh, with the agave, we will. Isn't that a red delicious? Yeah, what did I say it was? The McIntyre. Did I? Ooh, did I just scream? You did, you did, you did. <gasps> One point for me. No, actually not, but ah. go ahead. Um, so, as we were saying. The question is how do I, how do I handle life with lots of drugs? Yes. Lots of um, <laughs> I think the biggest, I think, <sighs> The routine was the one thing that kind of screwed me up the most, okay. right? So when I was working in uh, different corporate environments, I had a routine. So I was a lot healthier. I knew that at the end of the day, I would pack up my meals, I'd actually go to work, and I knew, and my meal planning was all on point because I would have to bring, thank you, I'd have to bring all of my stuff to work. So right. after that routine kind of went sporadic and kind of got blown up with being an entrepreneur, it ended up being where I had to work twice as hard to remember to eat well because it would just be hours where I would just be living off of coffee because I was firing off emails or doing right. projects and things like that. And I would forget, even though I was at home, to eat. And by the time I was hungry, I was hungry, hungry. So I'd right. go for the pastas. I would go for the sandwiches because they were easy to make. Okay. So um, that was the biggest challenge. And I think now that I've gotten you know two years in my business and my husband and I are now a little bit better with the scheduling thing, we know we just know how to plan better um, okay. and at least try harder because we're both, you know, heavier than we've ever been. So it's, and you feel fatigued. Yes. Right? And that fatigued, I can't afford fatigue. Right, right. Because I got a thousand things that are going right. on. Right. So it's just, you know, it's, it's looking and weighing the options and, and I think, again, after being part of, you know, corporate life and going into 
entrepreneurship, I now know what I can kind of step back from and not worry about so much. So now I have time, or at least I feel in my head that I have time to actually take the time to eat better. So, you know, I was talking to a guest before. Oh, sure, cool. Yeah, I was talking to a guest before and, and uh, she had mentioned about scheduling and, mm -hmm. and how important it is to schedule. Yeah. Um, speaking of schedule, I know firsthand your schedule involves a lot of meetings. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of networking events where we, you might not necessarily be able to bring a packed lunch. Right. You might not right. be able to carry food. So, you know, how do you handle that? How does that dynamic work in trying to eat well in, in that environment? Because I know a lot of our, our you know, a lot yeah. of our audience is that professional, you know, who, and, and I hear this a lot with my clients, you know, number one, I don't have time to eat. Yeah. Um, or eat well. Or eat well. Yeah. Or I have to go in business meetings, so da da da. So, right. Let's talk about that. How does that how does that work? I think I have to and this is different for everybody, but I think for me the biggest thing that I had to remember was or I had to be in the mood. I know that sounds really strange, but when I would when I would get to the point where I would screw up enough where I could feel the fatigue coming on, going to these events and going to these meetings, I would either do breakfast or lunch. And I would have to go to the gym a couple times that week to feel that I was worthy enough to continue the trend of doing better for my body. Okay. It was like I had to start somewhere, whether it was just eating well or whether it was doing something active with my body. Okay. My body would trigger and being like, don't lose the stride, like keep, keep going. Okay. So that would be my mindset driver to switch okay. and go into, you gotta eat better. So the meetings and the coffee meetings and things like that, I mean, I used to do paleo, so I just go with anything that doesn't have any sugar and try to stick with meat and no cheese because digestion. Right, and, right, right. Um, don't wanna be constipated for the next four weeks. Well, so it's always fun. It's always a good day. Um, but it's, it was just trying to remember like, all right, paleo, I know that works for me because I enjoy it and it's just no sugars, no dairy and all that stuff and, right. and none of that. So kind of worked So out. again, with the, the whole having a lifestyle, having a plan, uh, something to, to adhere to. So when you do get thrown that curveball, you yeah. have something to go back to. Um, so, and I know this is a big part of, 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 of your thing too with the entertaining. I came hungry. I see that. I'm, uh -huh. I'll take care of that in a minute. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> came I, with the food. I know, I know you're joke, I, you, you joked about it and all this and all that, yeah. but you know, alcohol is a sugar. Oh, and 100%. That leads, and that leads to that leads to weight. It's so, so how stupid. how is that played into you know? Honestly, like I I have to stop thinking that that is. I can I don't drink. Every day, I don't oh, drink no, every no, no, week. No no, 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 no. I'm just saying, like, it can you can get into that kind of, you know, you're going to happy hours, you're right. doing this. So, well, I'll that's your business. I mean, that's that's right, your business. Happy right. hour, engaging with your right. clients, that's your business. Right, schmoozing a little bit. Right. Um, so, th what I try to do is uh, tequila's paleo. You know, tequila club, I usually stick with that, and I usually just need one drink to kind of mellow me out a little right, bit, right. especially because there's a lot of energy, things right. like that. And then I just drink club soda the rest of the night. Right. So it ends up being where I, if I do choose something, it's always clear liquids, and I always keep it to a very minimal. Um, mixed drinks, again, if I'm going out with friends and I'm having one day where I'm having it, then I'll enjoy it. But I, I tried to, the first thing to go when I'm really trying hard is all the alcohol and all the dairy. So like even dairy in my coffee. So I use creamer, usually right. almond milk or coconut. Um, but I try to weed off that. I try to do more teas and things like that. So it's a process because you have to mentally be prepared for it. And when women go through that time of the month, you want sugars and, and chocolates. Right, right, and, right. It's, and then you're depressed. And then you feel bloated. And then it's just like all of these things that your body is like, I hate you. For doing it for right. For not only doing it, but now I've got a biological reason why I hate, I hate everything. Right. So it just amps up just the, it's also a self-confidence thing. Right? Exactly, exactly. So like, again, all of that kind of melds into one big, nice little chunk of crazy. Right. And then you got to figure out, all right, so Monday, I guess I'm starting. And then the, honestly, the biggest thing, shout out to Megan Dupree. She's keeping me honest, man. <laughs> She's scary. Me Megan will keep you honest. <laughs> Our friend Megan is a witch doctor. at the same time. She's a witch doctor. She's brilliant at what she does. She works with me in the morning. She's my accountability partner. And I find that to be a driver. If I... Like, and that's a very good point. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a guest I had on earlier, she was talking about her and her fiance, their success is because they work mm. well together with the whole lifestyle thing. Yeah. My husband um, and I can't do that. So. What, but then you have Megan as the accountability. So the, the, one of the keys to success, uh, in addition to having the schedule, is having someone either working with you or accountability. Now, you know, even, uh, 
there, there's pros and cons to it, but I, I know the social media, the, the different fitness and groups and, and things like that, if they're done right, I've seen them be very successful right. in helping people with the accountability. Someone to say, hey, look, you know, I didn't really feel like doing this workout today, but I did it, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, I had this person's encouragement and, and, and things of that nature. So there's many different ways to have that accountability, but I think that's a very important point that you brought up, yeah. that the accountability or having somebody working with you, uh, you know, in a team work setting is very important for success. Yeah, because when you when you feel like you're on that island by yourself, yeah, that that's a lonely place. And entrepreneurship in, in itself is already right. lonely as hell. So it's just like you, you kind of and plus a lot of people I thought, especially you know, women were the enemy for me for a long time. So it wasn't until I started my own business where I was like, mm, that's not right. That's not what you should be, be doing. And you know, I was thinking about this when you're talking. You know, and I can't speak of this because I'm not a woman, but from you yeah, know my, my female. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I have my times. Um, the the uh, pressure that's put on society to look a certain way, yeah. you know, and that, yeah. and 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 especially when you're com competing in a male-dominated uh, arena, yeah. that even puts yeah. more uh, emphasis on that too. Yes, and there's also a good point to that as well. So there's a little bit of a buffer, right? So I'm in a business development kind of role where I'm working with people of a certain stature, right? So you've got people who are CEOs, CFOs of their companies, or you got small business owners that need an extra buffer. People that typically work with me see the balance between the two. So some people are typically going to walk up to them and be more um, engaged with them than they are going to be with me and vice versa. So it ends up being a nice balance. Women typically don't, statistically, don't talk to women at networking events. Right. Men will talk to women at networking events. As, and, as and, a whole. As, and, and vice versa. Right. So it ends up being, and I saw that statistic and I was like, son of a gun. Well, That's right. Before we go any further, we have to take a quick break, oh. do these commercials. We come back, we're going to cook bread. this salmon and talk a little bit more with Ashley. I'm Jason Moss, That Damn Cooking Show. Be back in a moment. TV is a platform for people of any industry to share their story. Over 285,000 viewers are tuning in to RVN TV shows monthly. We guarantee a great experience that you'll be sharing with everyone you know while increasing your personal and company's brand awareness. But what is your brand? According to Forbes, it's a combination of your logo, your product, your design and feel, and your personality. Did you know that aside from being a guest, we offer even more opportunity to boost your brand? Adding your company logo and website on screen during your interview will allow viewers to recognize your brand instantly. Incorporating images and video clips is another great way to showcase your product during your live segment. Let viewers see how good you really are. And most importantly, there's you and your interview. For less than the cost of a newspaper, direct mail, or a magazine ad, you can leave our studio and within 48 hours have a permanent digital copy of your live segment to link to your social media, embed into your company website, or use in email marketing. Investing in your brand is so very important, and we can't wait to have you as a guest. Shelter dogs aren't broken. They've simply experienced more life if they were human, we would call them wise. They would be the ones with tales to tell and stories to write. The ones dealt a bad hand who responded with courage. Do not pity a shelter dog. Adopt one. And welcome back, folks. My name is Jason Moss, the host of That Damn Cooking Show. And with me today is Ashley. I refer to her as Ashley O. That's Ashley how she o. is on my phone book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and today we are doing a seasoned salmon. Don't touch that. Put it down. Thank you. With a fresh salad of tomatoes, Can peaches, apricots. You can't touch that either. Mm. Uh, onions. And we're going to throw some apple and raspberry in there. Uh, I've already tossed a little bit of agave and uh, balsamic vinegar in that while we're at break just to get things uh, going. So hungry. And uh, we're going to throw the salmon in the pan in a moment. So, during the break, you were asking me yeah. how to cut an onion. Oh, yeah. So, okay, first of all, I am, again, I'm not a 100% idiot, but I'm pretty, like, 35% idiot. Yeah, 45. Okay? 45%, okay. whatever. Semantics. Um, how do I, like, with the onion, I know you got to do this little thing, like this little... 
<laughs> like you got to use your knuckles to do okay. it, but I'm always afraid I'm going to chop my entire fur <coughs> off. You probably will. Okay, so wait. So how are first of all, how are my eyes not on fire right now? Because it's a special, it's a magic onion. What's the magic onion about? Where do I get the magic onion? No, the reason why it's just not it's not a very potent onion. Okay. Um, and there's a couple of different ways to keep from crying. Uh, one is to breathe through your mouth. Breathe through my uh, mouth? Yes, because it's I'm the... I'm a mouth breather. Well, you are a mouth breather. Mm. Um, so if you breathe through your mouth, it'll keep that um, crying thing down to a minimum. Okay. Also, just the more you do it, the, the more you get used to it. I don't... It doesn't even affect me anymore. Okay. So, so shmish, always, shmish. always, always, always start with a flat surface, okay? Because if it's flat, it's a lot less chance that you're going to cut yourself. Right. Always, always, always use a sharp Is knife. Is a new knife? Huh? No, same one. Oh. Um, I don't get paid enough to get a new knife. Got excited. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, always, always, always have a sharp knife, okay? Mm -hmm. So what you want to do for cutting an onion, all right? So flat surface, mm. sharp knife. Mm -hmm. As you were saying, you want to keep your fingers kind of tucked in. But right? how do you, how do you, oh. See, look, the claw. E. E. Okay. O, yeah. I, and sometimes <laughs> Y, all right? I so. Like Right, root side away from you. Okay. That's the root I'm side. Okay, I'm just gonna watch. Okay, okay. And down, down. What is this little fillet thing you're doing here? I'm showing you how. I'm showing that's you how to dice. That's not a cut. That's not a dice thing because yeah. it's not going to the end. You want a dice, right? I sure. Okay, and then you go like this. What? Keep stop. Okay. Keep your hand flat. Here. Mm. Look, see. Yeah. And just halfway in, and then again, halfway in, and then again, halfway in, and you're keeping the knife flat. You don't turn up. Don't turn down. Flat, controlled, and that's why it's important to have a sharp knife because yeah. the duller the knife, the more effort you have to put into it. Okay? Mm. So now you have your cuts down, your cuts across, and then you just simply go. Oh, that's how you dice things. Okay. Well, that's aggressive. That's really nice. And then how do you get to the end because it didn't cut all the way? Well, then, for someone like you, that's all I would do. <laughs> no, I'm being serious because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this, I would either um, you can just do a, a rough chop. Yeah, yeah. Like this. Yeah, that's how I usually do it. But then you got all the big pieces. This uh, way, everything's the same size. You know that's what I mean? Adorable. Real quick story. Mm -hmm. So, um, this is baby size. Yeah, for the first, no, this is called a, this is called a small dice. This is called a, me, a medium esque dice. It's a big daddy. No, it's size. that's called you're going to get in trouble by the chef. Big daddy. So, real quick story. Um, for the first four years of my career, I worked for French kitchens, and oh, you yeah. know, in French, everything had to be the same size and everything precise. So you would be cutting this thing called mirepoix, which is uh, celery, carrots, and onions. You use it for sauces, stocks, and soups. It's, it's a foundation of French cooking. Um, so you'd be cutting your mirepoix as a, as a sous chef or a cook, and the executive chef would always come by, and what he would do is he would rub it, run his hand across your cutting board, and if one piece was out of size, he'd take the whole thing, <gasps> throw it into a bucket, and throw it into the stock, and you'd have to do it again. Wow. So that's why my cuts all look the same size. Oh, trauma. Yeah. yeah. Trauma makes you perfect. Yes, it does. So, um, I lost my plate. That's okay. Uh, so getting back to what you were saying that about uh, lit working and being, uh, dealing with- Tired <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Tired all the time. And uh, now I have a big mess on my thing because this isn't what I'm trying to do. No, it's okay. You just ruined my whole plan, but that's, that's fine. all right. That's fine. Um, getting back to what we were saying about- Yeah. Working around uh, lifestyle, working around busyness, working around, um, you know, a hectic schedule. And yeah. we had talked about scheduling, we had talked about having an accountability partner, mm -hmm. uh, and we had talked about just, you know, muscling through it. So if you could give one bit of advice mm -hmm. to uh, our professionals out there who are trying to navigate through this thing, um, one thing uh, that you have found that you wish someone would have told you when you started this? When it comes to keeping that healthy life? Just keeping, just keeping your sanity in general, you know, keeping everything together. Uh, I think, honestly, the biggest thing has been um, ask for help. Mm. And like, don't be afraid to ask. And I, that's such a stereotypical BS way of saying it. You're going to need help. Yeah. Like, you don't know everything. You can learn a lot but you don't know everything. And that's good to know that you don't know everything. But also utilize small communities that are entrepreneurship communities and put the ask out. If you're having trouble or stuck on something or need a good referral or just say, you know what, I'm having a big issue with QuickBooks. Does anybody ever else have this issue before? Like, 
14 people will respond with 17 different perspectives on how to fix the issue. Because guaranteed, you're not the only one who's ever had that problem. Right, but you shouldn't be ashamed to ask the question. That's, that's the biggest thing. So I think when I started, I had a lot to prove. A lot to prove. No, I had a pride. I had all these things that I wanted to do. And I think I had worked for somebody for so long that I was always in a compliant role. And then it wasn't until I got my first client where I built my business in two weeks. And that proved that I can get things done. But it wasn't until I was at the cusp of my own sanity that I realized that I could accomplish it. Um, the other thing I would wish that people would have told me is you are, your value is, is, okay. So at the very beginning, you don't know what you charge, right? You, yeah, don't, you have yeah. no idea what your value yeah. is, right? But it's also a, a confidence and a pride thing and a practice thing. So as you're building your business, you may be really good in one thing and then want to put a flavor of something else onto a service offering. Your value will come with you seeing value in yourself. Self, and that's a very key point. And that's yeah. something you, you have taught me over time is to see the value in yourself right. and to be confident in that and, and not to weigh from that because you know something that you and, and even our friend Megan ha has taught me yeah. that if you don't value you and your product, no one else is no going to. No one else is going to do it. And I think that the biggest challenge I had was, was recognizing that my skill sets, as all over the places they were when I, was in my own, when I was working with other businesses, was valuable in my business. I didn't know what people would really adhere to, you know, until I did it and I accomplished it. It's really delicious. How, how fast did that cook? That was about, uh, about two minutes on each side. You know, and, and that's, I always say this every time I do this. Can I eat this? Eating well is simple. You know, we, we sat here, we had a conversation, um, and just with a few simple ingredients in a bowl and a, a nice piece of fish, you have a very, a very, very nice, attractive, flavorful, uh, healthy uh, meal here. Now, you know, it's very important to, when in eating well, it's about balance, um, you know, Fruits and vegetables are very important uh, in your diet. And a lot of times people have a hard time getting the adequate amount of fruits and vegetables in your diet. So yeah, what's your recommendation for that then? Well, you're supposed to have, uh, what's it, like 10 to 12 servings. Don't ask of, me, I'm the idiot that's eating the apple. <laughs> 10 to 12 servings of fruit to that, fruits and vegetables a day. So the majority of your diet should be fruits and vegetables. What is vegetables. coffee as a? Coffee technically is, it's a fruit. Because it grows no. on the tree. Yes, it is. Isn't that a vegetable? No, a vegetable grows on the vine or on the ground. More you know. Yes, so a fruit grows on the tree. Okay. Okay. Okay, so coffee technically is a... And fruit. coffee is a berry if you want to be... Con if you really? Yeah. So I'm getting just enough of veg uh, yeah. fruits in my diet. Uh, no? It's the whole processing. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I don't believe you. Yeah, but hmm. probably not. I would research it. Hmm. Um, so getting back to what I was saying... <laughs> I was you challenged me to throw you off when you I'm doing it. You didn't throw me off, actually. I know. So this dish is a great way to incorporate uh, the needed fruits and vegetables in our diets that we don't normally get. Um, it's also very important to have color in your, in your diet. Um, Why? Because color signifies vibrance. It signifies uh, nutrition. Why? Most things that are colorful, uh, as far as fruits and vegetables, are going to be high in uh, vitamins and, really? and minerals, yes. So, so you would you suggest more servings of vegetables than fruits because fruits have like sugars to it? Um, it depends on the type of fruit, it depends on your dietary needs, mm. and it depends on your goals. I mean, you know, and that's why... Skinny, what's the, <laughs> the goal for skinny? Skinny is not a goal, skinny is a mindset. <sighs> skinny is a societal uh, uh, trap, but anyways, okay, we'll get into that. Dr. Jason. Uh, that's why I say eating well as opposed to healthy eating because uh, healthy eating is very subjective. You're healthy and my healthy are going to be two different things, yeah. but we all can eat well. So um, it all depends on what you're eating well looks like. So say for instance you have diabetes, your, your sugar content diabetes. is going to be a lot lower than someone else's, so fruit might not, you know, certain fruits you might right. want to stay away from. Um, you know, say you are in a specific athletic endeavor that 
that your caloric intake is restricted or your, your, your uh, macros are restricted for certain areas. So your fruits and vegetables might be different. So Have you talked about your lifetime as a, as a relay race person? As a runner, no. As I, a runner? No, this Can we talk about it? Because uh, I'm also a host. How much time do we got? We have, about, right, we we have about three minutes. Three minutes, great. So you used to be? Still am, but yeah. You are a, um, not a it's a, what's the name of it? It's a, not a marathon runner. It's ultra a, marathon. an ultra marathon. So just so everybody knows, am I looking directly in the camera? Just so everybody knows, Jason, for fun, would like do the kind of races that Navy SEALs do, that SEAL Oh, that was, yeah, do. that was, that was the, uh, Like yeah, the yeah. one story you told my husband and I were like. Oh, the 13 hours in January. Let's talk about that. Yeah, where I broke my toe and had frostbite. Yeah, yeah. You're so dumb. Yeah. So tell me more about that. Because you're done cooking, now it's my turn. Yeah, well, well. So, so, okay, so tell me more about that race. Oh, that was actually, uh, it was an endurance event that we held. It was 13 hours, it so was dumb. in January. Uh, it was like four degrees at the start at like four o'clock in the morning, um, you know. Why? Why? Just to prove how big your nuts were. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, so, <laughs> see, I won. I broke you. I win. <laughs> we're done. I want. Can I eat the salmon? That's yeah. all I came for. I don't care about stuff and healthiness. I just want to eat food. Eat the salmon. This I show do is, care. This I do show care. Is totally just, derailed. Just to just to put a promo out there. I've worked with Jason before. He's come to my home and he's cooked for my husband and I, Alex. Saving time is one of the things that's the most valuable thing that we have because we have none of it. So when you've got somebody coming in your home, ma home making sure that your husband gets fed the, whatever steak he wants and I'm getting fed whatever fish I want and it's healthy and it's in a way where we can throw it in the microwave or like fried up whatever it may be it saves us so much time I don't fight with Alex as much anymore I well I don't <laughs> <laughs> I don't you said it, I know me. I know I don't feel like I am in a place where I have to th another decision I have to make right. which is extremely important to recognize especially as a business owner you don't have you make decisions all the time right. so one less decision and both parties are happy that is a home run for so, so to summarize this train wreck of an episode that we're having today, I will give me today, a damn fork. I will give I you a fork so in a minute. Hungry. This fork's back there. You're not supposed there. to eat while I'm on the show. This is dumb. My name is Jason Moss. This is that damn cooking show. Normally is a little bit more structured, but I had my very nope. special guest, not today. <laughs> my good friend uh, Ashley. <laughs> uh, so tune in next week when the show will be a little bit more subdued and nope. a little bit more structured. Boring. Uh, until then. Eat well. This is Jason Moss, That Damn Cooking Show. See you guys next week.